What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Ansys tutorial. Today I'll be showing you guys how to set up a torsion test in Ansys Workbench. Torsion tests are great indicators that allow us to see uh, how certain material specimens will fail uh, due to shearing forces. All that being said, let's get right into it. The first thing that you guys are going to want to do is load up Ansys Workbench and you should be greeted by a screen that looks similar to this. On the left hand side here we have all of our analysis systems. For this torsion test, we are going to be using the explicit dynamics module. So you can go ahead and drag the explicit dynamics module into the project schematic. The first thing that we're going to want to do is choose the materials uh, that we want to use for this test. So we can go here and double click on engineering data. And this opens up the engineering data tab. You can see if we go press on the project, we go back to our project tab. So in the engineering data tab, in order to add a material that is already preloaded in Ansys, we can go ahead and press on engineering data sources. And for this particular test, I'm going to be using uh, aluminum 1100O. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the explicit materials library. I'm gonna open that up by clicking on it and it will take a second to load. And then down here, all of the materials in that library should appear in a second there we go and we can see here that there is aluminum 1100 o here and we can see down here in the properties of the material that it has a shear stress of 2.71 times 10 to the 10 pascals so to add the material to a project we can go ahead and press on the plus sign in column b here and we know it's been added to our project when the little purple book appears beside the material and we can do this for as many materials that we want to do now that our material has been added, we can go ahead and go back to our project by clicking on the project tab in the left-hand corner. And now we're going to uh, build our geometry. So to do that, we're gonna double click on geometry and we can see down here, it says starting up space claim. So this is gonna take a second. I'll be back when it's loaded. With space claim now loaded, we can go ahead and build our geometry. Our geometry is fairly simple for today. It is just a cylinder that has a uh, reduction in its cross area over the effective length of the specimen. So we can go ahead and build that. We'll go and press on the circle icon up here. And we will tag that to the middle or the origin of our uh, space claim plot. And we can go ahead and put in the dimension that we want to put in. I'm going to be using 10 millimeters for today. And we can press on the pull icon here. And we can go ahead and pull this face to make a cylinder. And we're going to give it a length of 10 millimeters. Now, this is only going to be uh, one side of the non-reduced cross-sectional area. So we're going to go ahead and make our reduced cross-sectional area now over the effective length of the cylinder. And to do that, you're going to press on the circle icon again, and we're going to choose the top surface of the cylinder. And we can go ahead and draw another smaller circle that is concentric with the circle that is previously there. And we'll choose five millimeters for this one. And now you can go ahead and press on the pull icon again and pull it up. This time we're going to use 50 millimeters. And now we can finish off our geometry by adding the other end of the uh, non-reduced cross-sectional area. So we can go ahead and choose the top circle up here. And like we did below, we can now draw a bigger circle and it's going to be equivalent to the one that was down below at 10 millimeters. And now we can press on the pull icon here. And what we're going to want to do is pick both the ring here and the inner circle by holding control and now we can pull both these faces up to 10 millimeters to finish off our geometry so the last thing that we're going to want to do for our geometry is fill it the corners here uh, this sharp corner adds a huge stress concentration on our specimen so we want to go ahead and fill it those uh, in order to do so with the pull icon still engaged we can go ahead and press or select the edge that's here and we can pull that out and we'll give it a radius of 20 millimeters and we can go ahead and do that for the top as well and there we go our specimen is done so now we can exit out space claim by clicking the big x at the top 
and we can move on to the actual setup of our simulation. So we can go ahead and double click on model. And as we can see here, down here, it says starting up mechanical. So I'll be back when this is all loaded. With mechanical loaded, you should be greeted by a screen that looks like this, that has our geometry in the center of it that we previously built. The first thing that we're going to want to do is adjust the material assignment to our specimen. Uh, by default, ANSYS always puts structural steel as the material, but we want to do our simulation on aluminum 1100O. So we can go ahead and change that. In order to change that, we're going to press on the plus beside geometry over here to bring down the drop down tree. And we're going to press on our solid, our solid being this specimen here. And down here, we can see here that it says material assignment. And if we press on structural steel, there's a little triangle that appears. And if we click on that, we can see our list. And this is the list of where all of the materials uh, that have been added to the project will be located. So we can go ahead and choose our aluminum material here. And we can see now that aluminum has been added as the material of this specimen. So now the next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, implement a cylindrical coordinate system so that we can uh, specify this displacement in the theta direction, in the direction that is around the cylinder, uh, for the displacement or the amount that we're going to shear our specimen by. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and right click on coordinate system. We can go to insert and press on coordinate system. Now, for this coordinate system, it's going to be applied to one of our ends of our non-reduced cross-sectional area. So you can go ahead and press on the face selector icon up here. And we can choose this top face here. And go down to where it says click to change. You press on that and press apply. So now we can see that the coordinate system has been added to the top cylinder up here. In order to make it a cylindrical coordinate system, we can go ahead and change our definition of the coordinate system. So right by type here, it says Cartesian. If we press on Cartesian, there's a little triangle that appears. And if we press down for the drop down menu, we can choose cylindrical. Oh, I missed that. And as you can see, now we have two axes going in a linear direction and we have the Y that is uh, curved in the theta direction. Now we can see here that the uh, y direction or that theta direction is not going around our cylinder like we want it to. So we want to be able to adjust that. So we can go down here and go to global x axis. And if we press on global y axis, we can see that our coordinate system has adjusted, but it's still not what we want. So if we go ahead and press on global z axis, uh, we can see now that the uh, y uh, theta direction is now going around our cylinder like we want it to. So that is a well set up coordinate system. With our cylindrical coordinate system put into place, it is now time to mesh our model and break it up into all the finite elements. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and press on mesh. And if we right click on mesh, we can go to generate mesh. So you click on that. And this takes a second and we can see that the mesh that ANS is automatically generated is fairly coarse. So we want to refine that mesh a little bit. If we go ahead and right click on mesh again, we can go to insert and insert a sizing. So now we are able to control what the size of the elements are going to be. So where it says uh, geometry selection, we can go ahead and select our body selector this time and select our whole specimen where it says no selection, press on that and press apply. So now we can see that our sizing has been added to this whole body. And we, if we go down here to element size, we can now change the element size to whatever we want. So for today, I'm going to be using 1.5 millimeters. And now that our sizing is all ready to go, we can go back up to mesh and press on update mesh. And it will take a second to load. And we can now see that our mesh is a lot more refined than it was before. So the next thing that we're going to want to do before we run our simulation is set up our boundary conditions and forces. We can see that analysis settings has a question mark beside it, so it needs our attention. So if we go ahead and press on analysis settings, we can see that the end time is highlighted. It's yellow. So this means that ANSYS wants us to implement a value into it. For the simulation, we are going to use 0.000375 seconds. 
So now that our end time is specified, we can go at go ahead and add our fixed support at one end and our displacement in the theta direction on the other end. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and right click on explicit dynamics, insert, and go to fixed support. Now for the fixed support, uh, we only need to apply our geometry for that. So we're going to go ahead and press on the face selector this time. And we're going to go to the bottom of our geometry and select the bottom face with control, as well as the bottom cylindrical face uh, before the cross section is reduced like this. And we're going to go ahead and press apply. So now we can see that our fixed support has been added to two faces, the two faces that we selected. The next thing that we're going to want to do, like I said, is add the displacement in the theta direction that is going to shear our specimen. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and right click on explicit dynamics again, go to insert and go to displacement. So now we want to uh, apply this uh, displacement to the top cylinder up here that has before the cross sectional area, the reduced cross sectional area, sorry. So we can go ahead and choose our face selector again and go ahead and choose that face and press apply. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, choose the right coordinate system. As you can see up here, we have two coordinate system. We have the global coordinate system, which is just a regular coordinate system that was introduced uh, when we were catting our geometry. And we also have coordinate system, which I should have renamed, but this is the coordinate system or the cylindrical coordinate system that we specified earlier. So if we go down here to coordinate system and press on global coordinate system, we can bring down a drop down menu and choose our cylindrical coordinate system here. Now it's important that we actually define what the displacement is going to be in the theta direction. When we were defining the cylindrical coordinate axis, uh, we defined the y component to be in the theta direction. Therefore, our displacement in theta that will induce the torsion and the shear uh, stresses is going to be put in the Y component here. So for our displacement, we are going to put 500 degrees in the Y component. So now we can see that we now have a displacement in the third direction of 500 degrees. Now that our boundary conditions have been put into place, you can see that we have check marks everywhere. Uh, so our model is now ready to be solved as described by the lightning bolt that is beside the solution down here. But before we run the simulation, we want to choose the results that we want to see by ANSYS. So we can go ahead and press on solution, right click on solution, go to insert, go to deformation and total. And we can also see the equivalent von Mises strain and equivalent von Mises stresses. Now, you can also choose other uh, results that you want to see by just simply adding them and inserting them into the solution folder here. But this is going to satisfy uh, for what we need for the simulation. So now that we, we've told ANSYS what results we want to get, we can go ahead and run our simulation. So in order to do that, you can go ahead to Explicit Dynamics, right-click on that, and press on solve. And if we go down to solution information here, uh, there's going to be a window that pops up with a bunch of writing, and we can now see uh, how long it's going to take to run this simulation. So I will be back when it is done loading. We can see that the clock is now down to zero and the simulation compiled without any errors. So we can go ahead and check our results. We'll start by clicking on equivalent stress here, and we can play our animation. And we can see that we got a fairly good result. We can see that the bottom surface here is not moving because that is where our fixed support is at. And we can see that the top surface is moving only in the theta direction, which is the displacement that we applied to it, uh, which endorses induces the torsion on the specimen which causes the shearing forces and we can see right at the end of the simulation that the uh, fibers on the outer end of the uh, cylinder are beginning to fail due to those shearing forces which is applied by the torsion and this is an expected result like the tensile test where the specimen is going to fail at the point where there is the smallest cross-sectional area now, I also encourage you guys to go check the other results that we got. For example, the equivalent elastic strain, if we go ahead and press on that, we can see that the point of highest strain is right at the elements that are beginning to fracture uh, due to the shearing forces, that, which is induced by the torsion. 
With the correct results obtained, that pretty much wraps up this tutorial for setting up a torsion test simulation in ANSYS Workbench. Don't forget to like the video if you guys thought it was helpful, and subscribe for more engineering content.